Hey, 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 welcome to my channel, everyone. I'm the Global Cherry, and this is Dying Light 2. Before we begin, subscribe, like the video, and enjoy the show. Greetings, Pilgrim. <laughs> you found my guide. Read it, and it might just save your life upon reaching the city. I left the Pilgrims to investigate Velador, as it was the last bastion of mankind. I wanted to know what kept this city standing, what kept it safe from the Huron virus. Villador required a very long trip, but I was used to wandering. Okay, they're still chasing us. I think they're virals chasing us right now. Woohoo! How are we gonna make that jump? I called it. It's been 15 years, Spike, and you're still as strong as ever. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Five years later, who remembers Haran? I don't know if that city is even alive anymore. Hmm. I'll find it fine, Jane. We'll set up a house. We're gonna live there. No one's gonna drive us out. And I'll stop wondering like a moron. At least you have plans. I'll drink to that. To another day of living. I came across a couple of mishaps, but I dealt with them. Couple biters. They were feisty, but sluggish. Apart from the pests, the sights were truly beautiful. You can admire the sights, but not too long, Pilgrim. Nights are pretty dangerous, so it is imperative that you find a safe house. This is my view. Nights are for monsters, not for people. I had to fight a banshee who mistaken me for their ex. Well, hello there, Banshee. Ah! Oh. Ah! Stay back. Stay back. Ah! 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 Brutality as a pilgrim was not an issue for me if it guaranteed my safety. We will keep hiding in the darkness for now, but one day we'll take the night back. I hug myself to sleep with my new deluxe weapons and UV light found in my stash. Upon daybreak, I enter the city with the help of a mysterious informant. Do not be a loner in the city, because one man cannot face the world on his own. Come on, let's go! Everyone in Villador is infected, including myself. What kind of massacre occurred here? Oh shit, this doesn't look good. Oh shit! Volatile! Oh, you found me. So you may come across strange individuals inhabiting the city. My first encounter with them was with the renegades. They are an aggressive group of murderers who aren't to be negotiated with. They sound like they swallowed pop rocks, but that's because of inhaling chemicals. Rumors said they were experimented on by GRE doctors. I was lucky enough to survive my first encounter with them, and it was fun messing around with them and taking their loot. I loved thinking of countless ways to ruin their day. You were supposed to be dead! Where did you hide our key, boy? First, let him go. I don't know what you're talking about. Let him go. You couldn't make us let him go, punk? Uh, you like to see you do that? Bring it! Uh, oh, oh no. Get ready! I never expected to make enemies this quickly. Cat! Say that to me again, dude. Let's try this out. Huh. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun with this. Wow. They're pretty crazy, but this city has their own share of psychopaths. These psychopaths happen to have their own stories go. as well. Why did you betray me? This key is not yours. You can't... Where is it? Why is Walt super strong? I'm sorry. You leave me no choice, my friend. Oh, 
a psychopath! In the Get it. <laughs> we have to get out of here! Our pilgrim group is pretty infamous in these parts, so don't expect a warm welcome, especially without a biomarker. What did I do? The citizens at the bazaar responded quickly to making me swing on the gallows until my old friend Hakon helped me out. I helped this night runner back in the day when he was caught in the crosshairs of some virals. He introduces me to his kind wife. Is this your third one? Ow. He offered to help me obtain a biomarker. You don't know when you turn. You need a biomarker, and I know where to find one. Well, I'll follow your lead, Hakon. He gives me a short tour around the city and its citizens, leading me to learn about peacekeepers. They think of themselves as symbols of justice, but Hakon told me about their harsh enforcement of rules. They also seem to be at war with the bazaar, the same folk who tried to kill me. Peacekeepers! So, you have an army here? What kind of people are they? The peacekeepers. They treat people like that too. We clamber up the building to reach a crate containing a biomarker. Someone stole my biomarker from the last crate and Hakon told me about the GRE hospital, our last resort. I've overheard some folks pointing to it, but I've never entered one myself. People were saying experiments were conducted there, so I'm curious about what really went on there. Some mentioned vaccines, others mentioned superhumans. That sounds ridiculous, but I heard dark areas like those have good loot. Jesus. Even if they separate us, this is how we'll always find each other. Uh, Aiden! Not him, no! Aiden! Those are terrible experiments done to them. Dr. Waltz, we won't make it. The military will be here any moment. Wait. Close your eyes. The nightmares woke from their slumber and Hakon changed the plan to hiding in the bazaar. This isn't a good time, Aiden. Of course, the people there wished us to suffer a painful death and shut off the UV lights. A howler spots us and calls all their friends to sample our delicate flesh. Oh no! Not wanting to be food at all, Hakon and I run for our lives to his Nightrunner friend. It seems harder to outrun the infected as time passes. As a pilgrim, I never placed trust in anybody, but I didn't want my buddy Hakon to die. Let's find out. We'll be safe there. Killian, it's me. Open up. Your friends here, huh? Killian, keep them busy. I guess I will. Ah, it's hard. Uh, Hakon. Stop them. <laughs> Shit, there's a lot of them. <laughs> it's not over yet. Company. Hack on watch out. No! Hack on! His friend saves us right before we were about to die. His night runner friend doesn't trust me and only offered a biomarker if I go on a supply run for him at the GRE hospital. While sneaking in the hospital, I noticed how smart the zombies were getting. There were also some dormant infected within the hospital napping while standing up. However, there were a lot less of them at night, as the others are strolling in the streets. This mission is easy. I lied, it's terrifying. Ah, ah, ah! Alright, get the elevator open. 
volatile. Hold your breath. I've seen this fucker. <gasps> oh my god. You suppressed the memory, like I did of my third wife. Uh, look, I'm sure the infection ain't helping. Chin up. We'll find the marker and clear out. Hey, Con, now is not the time to talk about your third wife. Yeah, thanks. While searching for the crate, I dug some scrap from bags and lockpicked some doors, because you must never have shortage of resources no matter what. I managed to find the crate without getting nibbled on, and Hakon gives me my biomarker to get around the city. I even got an inhibitor to strengthen my stamina, because my body is weak as a twig. Sorry about this. What? Wait, what? Sorry about what? <laughs> about that. On behalf of all its Oh, the biomarker injected into his bloodstream. I christen you a citizen of Villador. You're about to turn. Get into the light fast. Okay, let's go. Things did start to go downhill from there, but I got used to cheating death. Feisty virals. Tell you, they were speedy motherfuckers. Oh. Wait, what about that volatile? Oh, don't like the sunlight, do you? I even got to do shrooms. For immunity. What did you think I was using them for? Hakon tells me what he wishes to do once the apocalypse is over. I'd like to live by the ocean. You know, it's supposed to be easier there. I always wanted to learn how to surf. I'm envious of him that he had future plans. All I've been doing as a pilgrim was just moving from place to place watching my back. It was just a means to an end. I promised him to help achieve his dreams in exchange for my safety. We cover each other's asses. How does that sound? I like the idea. Deal. Okay. Let's do it. Awesome. Deal. I wanted some time to myself before going to the bazaar and exploring the city a bit. <laughs> I notice how lifelike everything seems in a dead city. Man, I don't want to end up drinking my old pee. Someone's got to do something about the water situation. I'm sorry, what? Why did you start making potions? The city's doomed. Maybe too lifelike. I take in Trinity Church and meet the bazaar's people before Hakon contacts me. This place looks astonishing. The people here seem very free-spirited. Survivors, they call themselves. Hey, watch where you go. Whoa! I meet an inventor named Carlos who welcomes me to the bazaar and requests me to help him with his goat experiment. He stole my belongings, but he said it's in the name of science. Okay, Bill Nye. He creates an electric fence to contain the goats, but ends up turning them into lamb. His mentor Alberto promotes him for his mistake to becoming a craft master and offers me a gift to give my weapon some spice. Oh, Carlos. That would be a waste of time. Why? I don't think so. This is very, very... It has big, huge... You're saying it has potential. Potential, yes! It could be an effective weapon. I feel like my time at the bazaar is going to be very interesting. After being alone for so long, I got to create awesome experiences. Is this what it feels to be human? Living life to the fullest? Maybe with our knowledge of the outside, we can be a true wind of change the city needs. Only time will tell. If you want more guidance in the city, it will usually cost you fresh water, weapons, and supplies. But since we're both pilgrims, it will only cost you this much. Thank you, and that's all. As a 1000 subscriber celebration, I made a scary campfire segment pertaining to Dying Light 2's story. Colleen, why? Why would you do this? You were the last person who could save the city. Without you, the city will die. There's nothing left here worth saving anymore. Everyone inhaled the gas and are clawing at each other like rats. It's all their fault. 
They released their life's work to the public unfinished and thousands paid for their mistake. <coughs> and it looks like I'm paying for that mistake too. We wanted to save people, but all they cared about was profiting off the rich. What? So is it okay for people of higher status to live at the cost of others because of money? What about people with families? Children? They're all dead because of them. And they're being depicted on the news as a hero for what we hope to accomplish together as scientists. The infection didn't ruin the city. Consumerism and greed did. I know we finished a vaccine together and you left the formula to me. You sacrificed your life for this cure and left it to me to save the city. But Colleen, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this responsibility. Why should I save people who never listened to a word we said? The ones who selfishly sacrifice others for their benefit. The Haran virus is not the real virus. They are. And I want them to pay tenfold for what they've done. It makes me angry seeing them smiling proudly at the ball, counting cash in their hands. Even if I could save them, it's too late for me. Huh, my hands are becoming... claws. It looks like I really am becoming a monster. I can envision the tales they'll write about me. The elegant freak in a dress with claws who preys on their victims and scratch. Scratch. I may be the cure, but there is no one left worth curing.